video if you do click on to buy from him in china please do not link me up into the purchase that is your purchase with him and um i'm only sharing a place that i bought from i'm not vetting or crediting or doing any due diligence for anyone so use at your own risk um yeah thanks so much for watching let's get to 6,000 subscribers welcome back to my channel my name is luando and we are on part three of buying from china firstly Upolo, for taking so long with this i look busy look tricky i finally settled down i'm also busy doing the preps for the bed that styling class oh my god it's gonna be so fun if i was that if i was it consider yourselves a procedure okay let's get into it so i'm gonna obviously do this in like a chronological order so it makes sense and you guys can try and follow me i take it you've watched one and you've watched two so now we are on three part three starts from the beginning right so i have notes so i keep track and i don't um bounce all over the place october 2023 so was my first time that i made contact with my supplier in china i had mentioned to a friend that i was looking to buy equipment and i had been looking around and it looks very attractive for me to buy online and at that time when we check out um, gosh now i've forgotten it the other one not ebay that other one where you buy direct but even the so-called like la platform alibaba okay so i was checking on alibaba and a lot when i say a lot almost every person that i spoke to about buying equipment from alibaba told me no because but uh, alibaba is not really regulated so the people at Bago alibaba they were okay alibaba is reputable né? but the people who are on alibaba that are studying you it can be anyone and that also he, when it comes to text things and imports and it, it can be a bit of a mess né? and when i started talking to them i actually started to realize good most they are they want to do business in the app well if you have a problem you can also then obviously report them they were all pushing me to email they were all pushing me to do buying outside of the platform so it was always like okay let's chat outside okay email me okay what's your email i'll email you and that made me revert back to what um the people who had told me to just be very wary of alibaba when i was mentioning to this friend she was kind enough to say she's got someone that she's used and she'll gladly share those details with me then she said the details with me and i made contact he um was very nice um, i did tell him who i was referred by just so that i could get some credibility so that he can take me seriously about so what i did then was i shared the equipment that i was looking to buy with him and then he showed me what he could get and then obviously there's a bit of a pushback because i was like no i don't like what you have i assume he was trying to sell me what he has already available but i had specific things that i wanted um which he then said okay he will look and then so we had a back and forth i'll send him a picture but then he'll send me something that looks like what i want but it's not what i want um because obviously he's trying to get the right thing and if i'm open to other designs november 23 i then inquired about props now there are these not mickey mouse vanilla theme ice cream candy land theme so i wanted e the props for because i'm too lazy to make them and i know i can make them but i wanted to inquire so i sent them to him asked him if unazo nazo then i was like eh, well, he he's got them but then i didn't like what he sent me in terms of the options that he could get for me and also a pricing yeah so i was like mm -mm -mm, i'd rather spend that money on equipment so then by december ne, from october november december by december we then had finalized by now what it is that i'll be taking from him the the items and then um he then advised me at this point uba 
so he will get the items onto a ship and send them through to Durban. When they get to Durban, he has his own agent that he works with who will then be in touch with me and then that person will then assist me with getting the items from the ship to me and then also gave me a heads up about the clearance fee and the transport costs because he was not aware that I don't live in Durban. So he's like, oh, my friend, okay, that's fine. That guy will assist you, the agent. Cool. And then Kwaza U December obviously we didn't do this because then Gewa Valo it was Christmas on my side. Then we came to January now 2024. I was ready to make payment from December, but I don't know. I just was relaxed. And then U January I was like, okay, you know what? I actually I actually wanted this equipment to be here by March, so I was behind in, on Itaisha. Now that I wanted to pay him, we had issues with making the payment. So he, I needed to make a payment from my bank to a Chinese bank. Now, obviously, there's already the two bank problem and the international bank problem. So then I was making a normal payment. And then he's like, no, my friend, it's not a normal payment. You actually have to go. You have to load me as a like you're making a forex payment net like an international payment so that's my own dollar guys and it was still hell in a cell he then sent me asked me who are you bank with i said i bank with fnb he sent me a pop of someone who had paid um and he showed me what you know it is possible this lady paid me and i could see all that lady's information not like personal stuff but i could see the pop this is the account number that she also paid into she had no problems Guys, this carried on for the longest time. I think, yeah, that whole Jan, I didn't pay. That's so fair, February. I think end of Jan, that's when they they have a Christmas yabo. So then he was close. Then that relaxed and I'm going in terms of e payment. Um, by that time, I was then starting to explore PayPal. So now the friends that I had been speaking to, because I do have friends who have bought from China. Um, I do have a friend who is sort of an agent. I don't know if I can call her an agent, but she does buy from China for other people. So in planning booth, she's like, no, Lando, ask him if he um, will take PayPal. But now I don't, oh, before I forget, um, I was still scared. Guys, I still was a bit scared, but I think the fact that this person was referred to me by a friend I trust, I was more relaxed and very comfortable at that point to pay him. Now, heads up back to alibaba guys so alibaba guys because i didn't trust them so much my friend who has bought from um who's been to china and bought like the one person who was definitely against buying um actually there were two people who really really like do not go via alibaba so they eventually said if if you really want to go through alibaba because you feel it's cheaper negotiate that you don't pay the full fee yeah. so negotiate perhaps you pay 50 or you pay him 25 percent then when the things arrive and it is an agent so when the, you pay 25 percent alibaba person will ship the items to you when his agent confirms that the things are here you then pay him the 50 percent or 25 percent then if they want the items get to you you'll pay him the remainder about let him be the one who takes more of the risk so at that point i was like okay this is comfortable and then there was a problem with regards to paying them i wanted to pay the, using paypal because remember i'm now paying outside of the security of alibaba and the it's it would have been very hard for me to have the fight with fnb when i'm the one who paid someone in china if i got scammed they've so then they were like, Lando, rather go through PayPal. Well, PayPal basically is an international banking system. So they will vet. And if that person is a scam, PayPal will get your money back. So then I was pushing this guy to say, okay, I'll buy from you, my friend, but I need you to use PayPal. And he was like, no, he didn't want me to use PayPal. He was like, no, you need to pay me direct. And that's when I was like, yeah, I yes, need to Alibaba. For me, let me not explore that idea. So going back to my friend. So then, um, in February, I was, oh, I then go into the bank and I ask, I do the call center. Guys, this was a good week of calling around. Trying to, um, 
educate myself log in do this and i was every i'd log in um basically it's a process you need to go to your fnb profile so your banking profile and you add this person as a as a recipient but it's not a normal recipient because it's an international client and then also realized that i couldn't do this payment on my at my business banking because now it requires too many uh, nuts and crosses that you must do it as a gift it's not a payment né? it can't be that you're buying something from me so on the selections that i needed to choose i needed to choose gift guys eventually i gave up on fnb i was like you know what this thing is not happening then i asked then he said to me obviously because i need to go oh then we did make a payment so i was able to make it 500 i was just testing bank process said it went but yeah booyah after a week and he's like no my friend i didn't get anything then the fmb actually called me they said ma'am we noticed you made a payment um the account number da, 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 but the money will be sent back to you so the money did come back to me at that point i think because then he had seen goods i really really want to make this payment and i'm really struggling he then said let's do western union western union was perfect for me i had created a paypal but then when he said western union, i was like oh no man because i trust him i'm not gonna push the paypal route i will go via western union. so western union is linked up with um apsa my partner has an apsa bank account so i said babe can i send the money through to you then you make the payment so he had to go through the whole shebang that i had to go through with fnb where he loads the person but then with um with apps he had to basically like request for the person to be added i think they go and they vet the account number um or the details that he has like his reference don't 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 do any then they said yes it's okay you can make the payment and then go oh, good that's when we're able to make the first payment which was twenty nine thousand eight hundred twenty one rand thirty cents ne? It, I think this probably took about an hour to load him as a beneficiary and 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 so immediately he confirmed not immediately but like I think maybe like the next day he confirmed that he did get the money all as well and he immediately started sourcing equipment at that time uh, so when was this this was now in March March I immediately made a payment yeah. and then immediately what I loved about the banking same thing happened with the F&B the our South African banking guys, tops, they already were calling, they already like sending confirmation SMSs, is this a fraud, are you sure you're making the payment, and as soon as he withdrew the money, he actually told us that he withdrew the money, like I, I was so impressed with the process, so it really made it more comforting for me. He then received, how much was this, this is $1,543 and 5 cents um this was now on the 9th of april right so 9th of april is when we he when he confirmed uguti uh, so 9th of april is when he confirmed received the money in march was that whole western union loading dun, 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 with epsa and then and, and, and then eventually he didn't make the payment was in april now that's when he started sourcing out the equipment i did mention right now because we have a bank limit in terms of payment right we couldn't put we couldn't pay the full amount at the same time so then we then made a second payment of five hundred and thirty five dollars and forty seven cents the next day which was the 10th of april then after he confirmed this amount he had started sending me videos so he'd go to china to the china mall he'd go to the factory he he went to the factory showed me the video okay my friend this is the jumping castle he opened it he jumped up and down he showed me the box of what it looks like he showed me the pump he then went to the the factory for the chairs and then just take a photo of the chair my friend this is the chair confirmed yes my friend confirmed that's when we then realized good team my brown chairs the wooden ones were the wrong size so by 22nd the 22nd of april he confirmed that everything was ready and then the 23rd of april he shared the full boxes where everything now had been packaged and my name was on on the boxes so excited that day then on the 6th of may he confirmed that he had shipped the equipment and it would take two months for the items to get to me 
on the 5th of June, um, he then told me, my friend, heads up, within two weeks, your ship will be uh, docking in Durban. On the 11th of June, I then got the notification that I needed to clear the customs. So the items had now arrived. So at this point, that's when we got in touch with ooh, the agent. So my Chinese guy had sent me the details for the agent. Then he reached out to me and then I reached out back to him. So he then calculated this, the, the fees for me. He and the Chinese guy also calculated the fee for me. They both sent me the same amount, but one sent it in rands and then the China um, contact here. Now he sent them to me with his invoice, something like that, but now it had career fees. So the cost for that to clear the customs was $47, uh, no, $470. On the 18th of June, the Durham agent then sent through his banking details. And on the 19th of June, I made my payment. Then he said he has someone that he's always worked with and we'd like to recommend that person for me to send my things. I wonder how long that was open for. Um, he then recommended that I use his guy. Then he charged me uh, 12 centimeters by 4 cubic meters. I think that's what they say. But it's 12 CTNS times 4 CBM for the truck space that I would be occupying. And that would then be the cost to get the items from Durban to Joburg. And they would be delivered to me. I don't have to go somewhere in Gauteng when the things arrive. Then um, by the 27th of June, my stock arrived. So the people who were coming, so he did call me, uh, no, the people who were on the truck called me to say, ma'am, we will, we are in Joburg. Are you home today so that we can plan around delivery? I said, yes, they only arrived though. I was expecting them to come the next day according to the pack sheet and um, the delivery list but then they arrived the night of the 27th of the, the total cost now for the items that i bought in china was 9744 rand 80 cents is what i had to pay for customs i then paid 2000 rand for the transport and 37703 rand 76 cents for the equipment in total i spent 49000 four hundred and forty eight rand fifty six cents for the equipment that i bought do i feel like it was a fair buy most definitely yes am i going to do it again most definitely yes now that i found a person who's reputable and i found a person that i trust um the quality of the equipment i was pleasantly pleased with the manner and respect his agent had in talking to me the delivery people how efficient they were and how well my equipment was handled 10 out of 10. my supplier's name <laughs> so my supplier's name is name is my supplier's name is leon i'm going to put leon's email address in the description box I will also put down his number. He is available on WhatsApp, so you can send him a WhatsApp with your pictures to inquire. Please do tell him that you watched the video from Uluando so that he can, you know, just give me a discount the next time I make my purchase. I would like to add the pricing for the equipment in Rands just for context, you know, so that I really feel like this video makes sense. And we're not just excited about buying okay so the items that i bought from him were four things i bought three different types of chairs and one jumping castle so obviously each chair costs different because a different material a different supplier the first chair that i bought was the kids transparent chair i bought 20 of those one chair so per unit it's 354 rand and 12 cents when Leon quotes you, he quotes you with, um, what is this, RMB. So that's their currency. So he will send you um, an invoice. So his invoice says 140 RMBs. Then if you convert 140 RMBs, it gives you the dollar amount. 
then obviously if you convert it to rand you get the rand amount and i checked recently on the 23rd of july what's the date today today is the 30th on the 23rd of july this chair was available to buy in south africa and the cost was 550 rand okay so now for a person who's not buying a lot of things i would definitely encourage you to not buy from china if you're buying from china you should be buying because you're buying a lot of things and if you're not buying a lot of things team up with other people so that if i'm buying one you buy but obviously i'm saying one chair you're buying 20 chairs that person's buying 30 that person's buying 20 this one's buying a jumping castle it will make your um the cost for what do you call those fees for customs easier so the 9.7 4 4 80 cents i had to pay alone you could divide that fee with other people instead of paying that alone same thing with transport instead of you paying 2000 rand you could have divided that fee with your friends or your group so if you're buying one thing so for 550 rands if you're buying this gold this sorry this clear chair and you want it i would say buy it in south africa instead of going all the way to china because of the difference from 354 rand to 550 you end up paying for it when it comes to the customs and the delivery guys this video i in full in there so let's just quickly go through this because now my battery is dying okay so the the, the clear chair is seven thousand eight hundred and seven thousand and eighty two rand 37 cents if i had to buy that same chain in south africa it's going to be eleven thousand rand so for me it's a huge discount paying seven thousand rand or i can pay eleven thousand rand in south africa for the black steel chair i bought 20 it's 130 rmbs that is converted to 328 rand 85 cents and that is a total of 6,576 rand 49 cents. Obviously, guys, um, these numbers will fluctuate because of the conversion rate. The rattan wooden chair, that was 657 rand and 71 cents. So that was a very expensive chair to buy. It was 260 RMBs in total because i bought 20 i paid 13,154 rand 11 cents now i still have to pay another 5k to fix the legs room but i had that size issue but i'm not crying and then for the jumping castle i bought a three by three including a blower that was 2,300 rmbs that is 5,818 rand 17 cents. That same jumping castle I inquired from someone in South Africa and they were charging me 19,000 rand to buy a pink jumping castle for me. And when I bought my white jumping castle in South Africa for my supplier, they charged me 9,000 rand for the blue one and for the white one. So for the pink one, I paid 5k, huge discount to me. Uh, so you guys can see that if you are buying direct it definitely is much cheaper um if you're buying a lot of stock and if you're buying the camera and if you're going to be buying um small bits share this with people so example if this was one if this was like a group's um order the 2000 rand would be like 500 rand per person the customs are being 9.7 you could have been each paying two point something and you get because just the jumping castle alone, I think for me, that was my biggest um, push um, from 19,000 Rand for the freaking same thing. And I bought it for 5,800 Rand. I know that he also has the bubble house. The bubble house, he had it for 4,500 Rand. But I'm still undecided. I don't know. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I'm not a bubble house person, guys. Um, but yeah, I'm going back again. Okay, my page is going to die now. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for real this time. And yeah, don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. And engage with my content. Love you loads. Bye.